Okay, I know it's not a, as jam-packed as Lenny Kravitz, but that's okay. Uh, if you're uh, here to see Ed Caston guide me, you're in the right place. Uh, my name is Philip Levinson, uh, VP of Marketing. I'm here with Calpit Jane, who runs our Guide Me and our mobile team. And we're going to walk you through uh, what Guide Me is all about and why we're pleased to be partnered with Salesforce. And uh, we'll take some questions and we'll try to make this interactive. Because there's not a ton of people, uh, we should have partnered with Oprah and given away cars to those who showed up. And then uh, that people would have been very jealous. But we didn't do that. So. Uh, anyway, thank you again. Uh, why don't I start by talking about Guide Me and why there's a strong need for our solution. And uh, again, we'll keep this uh, very informal and interactive. Um, let's go to the first slide. So first of all, who is Ed Cast? And I'll just uh, walk around a little bit. But uh, Ed Cast is a venture-backed company. We're based in Silicon Valley with offices around the world. We partner with Fortune 500 and Global 2000 companies. Some of them are companies you probably know, uh, ranging from McDonald's and Walmart to GE to HP to Dell and uh, Accenture and many others. So uh, with those companies, we uh, help solve a number of key knowledge management issues. And GuideMe is specifically designed to target one of those. So let's go to the next slide. So first of all, GuideMe is all about in-app training. Uh, what does that mean exactly? Uh, just by a quick show of hands, how many of you here are involved with companies that are implementing new instances of, let's say, Salesforce uh, this year, or rolling out Salesforce to new employees? Ra raise your hand. OK. Four? Four out of eight? That's, that's good. How about? How many of you here are involved with rolling out any new software or application to your enterprise in your company? Raise your hand. So, so a couple more. So uh, what we're seeing, and we'll dig into this, is that there's a very specific right way to roll out these enterprise software solutions. And Calpit, if you go to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about that. Let's first talk about the challenges and problems that companies face. So uh, challenge number one, uh, and this is from a couple sources, uh, which you can see here. Why do enterprise software and application projects fail? Uh, there's, a couple, there's a few very distinct uh, categories of reasons. So uh, number one, there's this false belief that IT can do anything or solve anything, or let's just let IT handle it. Well, that's incorrect, and we've seen that uh, across the enterprise. Uh, number two, uh, inadequate documentation or tracking. And uh, that's both important uh, in terms of launching a project as well as the ongoing maintenance and maintaining uh, the success of that project. Uh, number three, inexperienced or unprepared project managers. Uh, uh, and we'll talk specifically about how GuideMe works with project managers to make sure they can then manage the implementation across the enterprise. We'll talk about that. Uh, number four, competing priorities. A lot of times enterprises commit to solutions and then uh, the sales team or the customer success team has other goals or other priorities that make it difficult. And number five, disregarding project warning signs. In other words, uh, there's challenges, but they're not always digested and acted upon in the right way. So, uh, we're going to address uh, how Guide Me specifically focus on resolving this for the enterprise. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, and in-app training really is what we've seen to be the most compelling answer. And what does that mean? In-app training addresses Charles Jennings' point, which is he says learning is more likely to be more effective the closer it occurs to the point of use. So if you're rolling out, whether it's customized instances of Salesforce for new employees, or if you're rolling out, you know, transitioning to Lightning. In fact, let me ask, how many of you are either thinking about or considering or thinking about thinking about Lightning? OK. Uh, wh which company are you with? OK, great. And are you thinking next year or maybe sooner than next year? Or? OK, great. 
And, and what are, in terms of your concerns or challenges, have you started to discuss what you're going to do to address uh, the, the needs that you have? We have. We actually met. We have a busy accelerator. Okay. Accelerator. Great. So we actually met with the skills team. Really a broader developer group. Okay. They asked us to ready to go lightning, but the developers weren't quite ready. Okay. So after speaking with them, Okay, that's interesting. Looking at guided in app. Okay, great, great, great. And we'll interact with e with each of you. But this is a great example for us to jump off on, which is with in app training, we can help decrease the barriers to implementation. I know you said your admins were had one set of expectations, your developers had a different set. So we're gonna make it easy by adding guides and walkthroughs that also can be rolled out in multiple languages. Uh, are you gonna be rolling out in a multinational way or just English, okay. Any of you have multiple language needs within your organization? Okay, so uh, what we'll see with in-app training is the engagement will be easier and closer to the use and we've seen it to be very effective. So with that, that's enough of an introduction. Why don't we walk you through some specific examples and demonstrations, and I'll hand things over to Calpin. Yeah, so thank you, Phil. Uh, so let's try to make it uh, as uh, interactive as possible. Uh, so what I will do first, I'll go into the demo, and I'll try to demonstrate the technology. Uh, and as needed, feel free to stop me. And we'll also use this session to create a couple of quick guides. So I want to show you both how guides can be delivered to the end user. And in this session, we'll also try to create some quick guides. And I'll show you how easy it is to create guides both for classic uh, as well as lightning. So again, feel free to stop me onto any slide if we need to. So the core idea is very simple. Like, uh, let's say if I'm in lightning, how do I offer a list of uh, in the application training and guides to the user? So you can create categories, you can create subcategories, and you can render the guides in the application, and you can customize the look and feel. So here I'm showing a widget, uh, this widget. Uh, there is also a beacon over here. If you notice, there is a question mark. Uh, so you can launch the guides either through a widget, or you can launch the guide through a question mark, and it's also possible to launch the guides through a URL. So let's say if we want to teach the user uh, how to do a poll inside, uh, inside Lightning, uh, here is a quick guide. Uh, every guide comes with a video, every guide comes with a Jiffy, and every guide comes with a ability to download material. So you can download a PDF, you can download a Jiffy, or you can download a video. Click on can, Chatter. And you can play the guide in the application in the sound. Click on Poll tab. Right? Uh, audio can be turned off if you need to turn it off, but this is very friendly. So, What would you like to ask? Enter question that you would like to ask. Enter choice one. So the core idea over here is, uh, as I'm training my users, uh, I can launch these guides into multiple ways. Here I'm showing you a beacon, like the question mark. So it's possible for you to drop a beacon onto any specific object. Uh, and that beacon can also launch the guide. Click on Chatter. And every guide is available into different languages. Uh, like earlier we heard, uh, like there is a way to launch guide into Japanese, Chinese, uh, different languages, and system will automatically do that conversion for you. So I can run the exact same guide into Japanese here. Video click shimasu. So if you have international audiences, there is text-to-speech, there is language uh, conversion, uh, all of that happening for you. Uh, so let's take a step back and try to create guide, and let's try to understand how easy it is to create a guide. So I'll go inside, uh, like, I'll create a quick guide. Yeah, go and ahead, Phil. Calpit, uh, so this addresses, what was your first name? It's OK. Kathy, so uh, maybe with, in Kathy's scenario where she's looking to transition from light, uh, classic to lightning, uh, mm -hmm. maybe we can walk through. 
Perfect, that, perfect. Yeah. So let me switch into the classic mode. Uh, we'll try to create a guide into classic first, and then we'll come back uh, inside the lightning, and then we'll go from there. So let me switch to Salesforce Classic. So I'll first play a guide inside Classic. We'll try to create a guide inside Classic. And it's possible for us to guide the user step by step how to perform a task. So if you notice here, I have named my opportunities differently. But let's say if I want to change the label uh, inside, inside Classic, I'll run a quick guide over here. And then we'll come back and we'll try to create that exact same guide. So here I'm play, I'll first play back the guide, and then we'll go through the steps of creating the exact same guide. Click on Setup. So this is the step one. Click on Customize. Here is the step two. Click on Tab Names and Labels. Here is step three. Click on Rename Tabs and Labels. Step four. Scroll to Opportunities. Click on Edit. Step five. Enter Singular Label. So I'll just put a label over here for now. Enter plural label. I'll put another label. And it'll tell me exactly what I need to Hit do. save, refresh, and you are done. Smiley face. So here is a, here is a quick guide that we have, uh, have walked you through. Now we'll try to create the exact same guide. And I'll change the couple of uh, options uh, as I create that guide. So the very first step was uh, it involved clicking on the setup field. So I'll say add guide. I'll get a quick name, how to change a label. And we'll create guide in both classic and lightning. Uh, I can choose different languages, different voiceovers here. So let's just convert it into a female voice. And I'll hear that voice here. How to change a label. And you can choose different speakers. There are more than 100 speakers available. Uh, we'll try to create this guide into more British sounding voice. How to voice. change a label. Right, so uh, I'll go ahead and I'll submit that. And then I'll create the first step. So for the first step, I want users to click on the setup. Uh, so we have a capture mod and we have a navigation mod. So right over here, I'm going to capture this event. So this is the first step that we want. We want users to click on setup. Uh, you can customize the look and feel of this guide. You can put your own corporate logo. Uh, you can change the background color. Uh, if I want, I can also uh, I can record the audio into my voice as well. Uh, so all of those capabilities are available. And this event will fire when I click on the selected element. So I'll hit Save and Next. So that specific uh, step has been recorded. Uh, after that step, uh, I want user to click on Customize as an option. Uh, I'll record that step right over here on click of Selected Element. I'll again hit Save and Next. And after that, we want uh, users to click on tab name and labels. I'll record that as well. And right after that, we want users to click on a rename tab uh, and labels, right? So when I hit save, uh, it will automatically create uh, all the steps for me along with the screen capture. So as you can see here, uh, I have captured the step one, step two, step three, step four. Uh, and when I hit the play button, mm, Click on Setup. It will actually play back those steps for me in a step-by-step -step sequential manner. So this is a very powerful technology. Uh, Click on Customize. Yeah, go and, ahead. And go. let's check in with Kathy. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, to what extent does this help address the question or the uh, challenge that you guys are envisioning with the transition to light? I mean, yeah, this is exactly the tools we were looking at. Okay. Absolutely, and so so Kathy says, well, this is what we're looking for and is uh, why we've been looking at some solutions, including other companies. Now, we'll provide a comparison and contrasting with uh, WalkMe uh, and WhatFix, so we'll discuss that, and that's we're a few minutes away from that. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone else, uh, w what sort of uh, big rollouts do you guys, w which company are, are you with? Um, Oh, great. Great, okay. Okay, and uh, so I transitioned from uh, Classic to Lightning. Are How many um, employees uh, total would you say uh, you're, you're supporting? Moving to Lightning, probably about 500. Okay. 
2000, okay. And are there any other software solutions you're concerned about in addition to Salesforce? Okay, that's the main focus. Uh, Kalpit, do you wanna maybe show, um, are there any specific examples that are fresh in your mind uh, in terms of where uh, employees have challenges with their rolling out? Like, let's say, take Classic. Any specific hurdles that you're seeing um, at Capital One with folks uh, having trouble or needing IT or needing to call on you to help them? Okay. Okay. Okay, that's great. And your first name again, Alex. So, uh, Kalpa, do you have another example that maybe ties in with uh, some custom customization and walking folks through customization? Sure, sure. So, I think any browser object, uh, any uh, can be captured. So, I'll switch into the Lightning experience, and we'll try to create a different guide, right? So. Let's say, uh, like one of the problem people have is, how do I find stuff inside Salesforce? So I'll first tell you what, what the steps are needed to get to that, and then we'll create a guide on that. So we see this icon over here. Uh, you click on that icon, and then you come in this search box, and you type in, let's say, service, and then it filters it down to the service. So we'll try to create a quick guide that will explain how, how to create a, a guide like this. So let's go ahead and quickly create that. So it, it will work for custom objects. Any browser-based uh, content can be captured using GuideMe. Uh, we'll also try to add a PowerPoint slide in the equation, and I'll try to record my, uh, my video as well. So let's go ahead and create a quick guide. Uh, so I'll click on the plus icon. I'll say Add Guide. And I think the core thing we are trying to say is, how do I find information inside Salesforce? So first thing I'm going to do this time a little bit differently is I'm going to record my video first. So I'll add some personalization to the guide. So I'll click on Add Camera Video, and I'll simply record my, my speech. Hey, I'm your personal instructor. I'll guide you step by step in recording and show you how to find stuff inside Salesforce. Let's get started. So I'll, I'll record this step. Uh, it's like a welcome, uh, and I'll just uh, submit it right now. And Kalpit, this would be, uh, Alex, in your case, with some customization that you have, you could record something that basically is a video and as well as an inline step-by-step -step guide mm -hmm. uh, for, for the, uh, to help them transition to this. So. Exactly. So what I've done is I've recorded my personal camera. I could have also recorded the complete uh, screen capture of my desktop. Now I'm going to add the first step. So first step involved clicking on this uh, I'll move this uh, pop-up at the down. So there is a capture mod and there is a recording mod. Uh, so I'll, I'll, my first step involves clicking on the nine rectangles. So it detected that uh, there is a click event going on app launcher. And the next step will be complete on click of selected element. I could have also said that finish the next step when you enter some text or when you select a radio element. So all of those are possible. I can also move around this icon or this dialog above or below. So I'm going to go ahead and save and next that step. And then I'll go inside that specific step and I'll record the next one. So I'll click on this one. I'll switch back into the capture mode. And then I'll click on the search item. And it has already selected the text for me. right? So I don't need to enter anything here. I can simply say here is simply type what you are looking for in the find box. So I can customize the look and feel of this dialog. I can record my own audio. I can also listen to the audio as to Enter what machine find is that thinking. Item. Simply type what you are looking for in the find box. Right. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll say that uh, like this is my second step. And in the third step, I'll ask them to, again, like type in, uh, I'll, I'll ask them to type in service. So type in service in the search box. That can be my third step, right? Type what you are looking for can be my third step. And then uh, I have a way to like select the element, reselect the element. I can change the opacity of the screen if I need to. I can make it darker. I can make it uh, less opaque. And I'll go, go ahead and save this step. 
So now these steps have been recorded. So if you remember my first step was a video step and then followed by I created a couple of steps. Uh, when I publish this guide, it will automatically create a video file for me, it will create a Jiffy file for me, uh, it will create a PDF file for me. Uh, so it automatically records uh, and converts it into multiple form factors. So you can send this Jiffy through Chatter, uh, you can send this Jiffy through Slack, uh, you can also ask the question into natural languages, like how do I perform a task inside Salesforce, and using natural language processing, it can send a Jiffy back to the user. Uh, every guide is also available as a PDF. So the system will automatically convert the guide into PDF for you as well, into different languages. Uh, and every guide is also available as a video. And if you recorded your own video, it will automatically stitch together uh, and creates those uh, videos for you. So I'll go ahead and play a quick video over here. Yeah, go ahead. And, and let's uh, pause for a second. Alex, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, does this seem the, like the right sort of uh, solution that you guys would be looking for as you're adding some of these customized instances? Sure. Fair, fair. So very good question. So question is, how can you launch guides? Well, there are three core ways uh, guides can be launched. One is uh, what we call as a widget, right? So this widget can be installed through Salesforce uh, approved application or through a browser extension. And this widget can be customized to look like your corporate logo. So if I want, I can change the look and feel of this widget. So the number one when way is through widget. The second way is through a beacon. So as you can see here, I've got a question mark over here. If I click, click on, on chatter. that question mark, and you can drop this beacon based on the roles. So depending on uh, who, what your role you are from, or depending on who the user is, uh, this beacon can be customized. And third thing is through a URL. So if I come up over here, if I copy this URL, you'll notice that on the top of the URL, I've got a couple of parameters. Uh, so you can send a mail to the user, and as soon as they click on the mail, uh, the guide will automatically get launched. So this is the third way. Click on Chatter. It's launching the guide. So you can launch the guides through widget, you can launch the guide through beacons, or you can launch the guide through URLs. Uh, go ahead, there is a question there. Yeah. Exactly, so there is a great so, question about uh, can we track, uh, can we push a guide to a user and can we track if they have, so it's possible for you to, like here is a message, so let's say if I'm a new sales lab, rap, uh, I can push a message to the sales reps and I can show that, hey Ryan, welcome, I've got a new guide available for you. The user can say guide me or they can say dismiss and they can perform their task. Uh, you can also do this uh, in-app push-ups. So you can say that looks like you are trying to create a new opportunity, would you like me to help you? So you can either force the guides or you can, uh, you can make it optional, uh, but you as a trainer, as an administrator, you have that control and you will get detailed statistics about whether they have finished a specific guide or not. Uh, so it's possible for you to push the guides, it's possible for you to track uh, whether a specific guide has been completed or not. Uh, uh, and does that answer your question? Uh, what was your first name? Dave, Dave uh, which company are you with? Uh, my company's for Okay, got it, Implement. And uh, Dave, are you seeing other, what other sorts of broad challenges are you seeing across your uh, partners and, and your clients? I mean, adoption is like at the top of everything. Okay, uh, adoption, adoption yeah. So, Okay. 
Absolutely. Do, do we want to, um, I want to make sure we address the competitive differences. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are aware of other solutions and there are some really distinct differences. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's not run out of time on, on that, Calpit. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, should we talk about that now and then we can maybe show some other examples? Sure, sure. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about the competitive differentiation. And, uh, and why don't I just read this one quote? We just had a CIO from a Fortune 500 company who said, hey, I've got three criteria. First of all, ease of use across all use cases, whether we're rolling out in the US or overseas, or rolling out across Salesforce or across Workday or across SAP, that's number one. Number two, security. He said, I can't have anything that adds any vulnerabilities because I won't get it uh, approved by our uh, CISO. Uh, number three, cost. He said, uh, I, I've looked at some solutions and they're not all as cost effective as I would have liked. So if you can help me in those three areas, I'm interested. And with that, why don't mm -hmm. I let Calpit walk through the examples. Perfect. So I think Phil gave a very good points, um, but I would love to, if there is a, a specific point that I want to mention here. Uh, so we have invested a lot into machine learning, uh, into artificial intelligence. Uh, as well as ease of use, uh, like you saw me earlier creating guides. Uh, so we can do text to speech, we can do text conversion into multiple languages. For every guide, we are creating a Jiffy, we are creating a PDF, we are creating a video. Uh, and then we are also capable of creating guides by learning. So by observing the task that user is performing, we can auto create, yeah, there is a question there. Yes, Kathy. Question exactly. So there is a very good media. question. Uh, Salesforce has a limitation about 250 meg of storage that you can do inside custom objects. Uh, so you can store the guides. Uh, I'll show you a quick slide over here. Uh, so we are working with World Bank and uh, we created a very secure architecture for them. Uh, so you can store the files inside Salesforce if you want. You can store them onto SharePoint, Box, Dropbox or you can store them onto our secure cloud as well. So you have multiple options of uh, storage. The technology is architectured in such a way that if you want a complete black box solution is possible, meaning that PDF, Jiffy, video, all can be downloaded on the client and it can work without the internet access as well. Uh, so there are a couple of options available to you. Uh, you can also do a installation uh, where everything can be on-premise, on the box, uh, or you can also do installation where the guides are hosted either inside Salesforce or on the secure public internet cloud. So World Bank is one of our customer and they decided to implement everything on-premise. So it's on their servers, on a government approved cloud, and that's where things are sitting. You can store the you can store it on Google Drive as well. Yeah. So every the architecture is very simple. There is a JSON file which points to the various uh, kind of uh, MP3 files, MP4 files, images. So you can store them into multiple places. It's a very simple architecture uh, for storage. So you can also create guides not just for Salesforce, um, but it's possible for you to create guide across the enterprise. Uh, I'll show you some examples of outside the Salesforce. And so then for, after that, can we go back to that comparison slide? Sure, yeah, sure, okay. sure. So I'll, I want to show you that uh, you can get an enterprise-wide license, and it's possible for you to create guides not just for Salesforce, but for Excel. Uh, PowerPoint, desktop software, or web-based software, or mobile software. So I'll Welcome run a quick to guide Excel over here. 2016 Pivot Tables. Our goal is to understand this data via Pivot Tables. Here we have yearly salary based on race and sex. So you can have guides for different software. Uh, you can also run guides in a, what we call as a picture-in-picture -picture mod. Uh, so right over here you see there is a Guide Me utility, which is on top of uh, Lightning and you can run the guides into this picture-in-picture -picture mode Click as on well. settings icon. So it can give you instructions as a step-by-step -step sequences. On uh, so there are a couple of ways uh, you can run the guides. 
you can also do complete uh, screen capture. So it can create a complete video of your screen and it can record every action that uh, user is taking. So as Phil mentioned, I'll move back to the comparison slide and, and I'll try to focus on this. Let's just check in. Uh, uh, are you guys with the same company or two different companies? Uh, wh which company? Care first. Wh which one? Care First. Care first. And uh, first name is? Rick. Rick, uh, any other examples that you're focused on, Rick, there that uh, you're concerned about going into 2018? Adoption. Adoption, okay. Um, of what specifically? Uh, we have a lot of custom build. Okay. Okay. Custom built software and applications that you guys develop internally. And what do you build those on? Or what t are, are they uh, CRM related? Are they. Uh, it's, it's NS. We have okay. Sale okay. We're okay. Got it. And did you have any specific questions? But uh, Calpit's going to walk through some examples. How. Yes. Yeah. This so the question is, is this all done at the admin level? And, and Calpit, who are the most frequent users internally at uh, large enterprises? Fair, fair. So a creation is possible by administrators or by anybody. Anybody can create. So there is a creator part. I can create guides. And then within the Salesforce, there is a configuration. So you put in a specific identifier, and then guides start listening to that identifier. But well, there is a small configuration step in the Salesforce App Exchange package where you specify which identifier you need to listen to. Like, for example, uh, I'll show you the identifier for the guide that I was showing you. So if I go inside settings, uh, you see there is a, uh, if I go inside the embed option, there is this specific identifier. So based on that identifier, it will listen, it will create all the, it will bring in all the content uh, so you can create, uh, anybody can create guides, but there is a master administrator who will approve, and then all the guides will start appearing inside your Salesforce. So like, for example, if you see here, I've got a category, subcategory, I'm inside the Chrome browser, but if I move inside my Safari browser, inside this Guide Me utility, you will see exactly the same set of category and subcategory over here. So whatever I was showing you over here, you will see the exact same thing inside your Salesforce instance, and right now I'm inside a Safari browser. Uh, the resolution is a little bit low, but you can get the idea of how it will appear. So anybody can create guides, uh, administrator has to approve them, and then all the users can start seeing guides, and you can configure guides based on roles. So role A can see specific set of guides, role B can see certain different set of guides. And does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, I think that's a good segue back to the uh, comparison slide, and then I think we want to take another uh, seven or eight minutes and then wrap things up, and we're going to stick around and answer questions and can exchange info. Uh, also, that's Ryan Bertrand over here who uh, runs all of our outreach, and he's uh, also available to answer questions after this. So, uh, Kalpa, do you want to pull up that comparison slide? Sure, sure. And, so I'll uh, quickly go back to the comparison again, and... So the core thinking that we have in GuideMe, uh, so we heard from our customers that WalkMe is expensive uh, and it's difficult to customize. So it's difficult to, uh, for example, adding audio, video, PDF, Jiffy, uh, if you want to integrate different type of content. Uh, so as Phil mentioned earlier, cost is an important factor for us. Uh, this software is available only for $1 per user per month. Uh, and as you scale to more number of users, the price goes down. So it's not a very expensive software. And, uh, and also, can you address the point about uh, that it's enterprise-wide? Because exactly. uh, some of the people who stopped by our booth said, oh, uh, we, we think we're getting an OK deal, but we have to pay for every different software platform that we roll out with. Mm -hmm. And once we add it all up at the end of each quarter, it starts to really become a big number. Mm -hmm. So you can not only create guides for classic lightning, but for any enterprise software, web-based or desktop or mobile. Uh, so you get license not just for Salesforce, but you can create uh, in-app guides for any software. Uh, 
uh, and you can obviously render them inside Salesforce using App Exchange upload application, or you can get our secure browser extension. It's available for IE, it's available for Safari, Firefox, Chrome, and you can render guides for different platform as well. So mobile applications, desktop applications, uh, browser-based applications. Uh, so you have ability to create guides beyond Salesforce as well. So and so that's a full license. Uh, and can you address the, uh, some of the other points? Uh, for example, security. Uh, how many of you have had security come up in some form within your enterprise in the last 12 months? Uh, raise your hand, okay. Uh, you in the back, uh, something's come up re in, in the last year. Is there anything you can share with us? Or? Okay. Okay. Use force.com. Uh, uh, which company? Um, one source virtual. One source virtual. First name? Brett. Brett. Okay. So uh, Brett raises a good point about security being an issue. How uh, maybe we can walk through uh, how we differentiate ourselves and sure, uh, sure. why we've been winning a number of enterprise deals on that uh, key point. So. Sure. So the core architecture, the way we have designed the system is uh, the customer is in control of uh, guides, videos, uh, every content that we create. Uh, so it's possible for me to disconnect uh, like from internet and I can still uh, run the guide me completely in the box, right? Uh, for running Salesforce, I need internet connectivity, but for running guide me, uh, it can be done completely in the box. Uh, so every uh, dialogue that you are seeing, it has a corresponding MP3 file, MP4 file, PNG file, uh, everything can be stored locally, uh, and you can run the complete guide me in the box. Guide me can also listen to your box, SharePoint, or Dropbox, and it can read the data from your internal uh, location. So, so this is one of our core advantages. Uh, as of our customers, we are working with Netflix as an account, uh, World Bank as an account, and they are very conscious about what data gets captured. Uh, like Netflix could be working on next version of House of Cards, they don't want anyone to know, including service providers. Although maybe not that show in particular. Uh, it might be uh, others uh, seeing that that one, I think, just got canceled. Uh, uh, but that's a good say. I, I want to just take three more minutes because sure. uh, we don't want to take more time than allocated, but we will stick around to answer questions. Uh, security is also, we are, a, a, We've, we've won a number of product awards from Brandon Hall and other analysts. Uh, you can read more about us. Uh, we're a venture-backed company. Uh, we're also 100% compliant. Uh, one of the companies, uh, one of our competitors got removed from this conference because of uh, uh, some controversy with them exchanging passes. And, and a financial services company said, we don't want to do business with any company that's not compliant because that'll be a red flag right there. We want to do business with you guys. So uh, I encourage you, just if you're evaluating options and if your company's evaluating options, invite us to the table. We will present a very good proposal and some great offerings. Let's go to the last couple slides, because uh, uh, I know people need to wrap up and move on. Um, so uh, first, this is just to remind you who, uh, uh, th this is who some of our customers are. Uh, in addition to the ones I mentioned, Schneider Electric, Salesforce is both a customer and a partner of ours, McKinsey, uh, Shire recently signed on, American Family uh, Insurance, Kraft Heinz. Let's go to the next slide. Here's some of, the, of our partners. This is a big eye chart, so I'm not going to list every company because that would take 10 minutes right there. Uh, but you can see we've partnered with a lot of folks across uh, multiple industries. Uh, and then uh, Calpit, last slide. Uh, this is how to reach us. Uh, you can reach Calpit uh, at that email or myself here. Uh, we're based in Mountain View. And uh, let's go and take some final questions, and then uh, we'll wrap things up. Uh, guys, any uh, other thoughts or questions? Uh, what, what do you think? Are there any limits? 
Okay, any limits on the number of steps for a, for a, uh, a guide me uh, in-app walkthrough? So we have seen like World Bank has created guides with like 70 plus steps. Uh, so you can go as deep and branching as possible. So based on a specific uh, step, you can branch the user into a different guide. Uh, so there is no limit and you can also do branching and there is some logic uh, that you can put in if the user has selected field, you can branch them into another area. Absolutely, great question. Uh, uh, go right ahead. Uh, how would we customize is the question. Yeah, so uh, you can always uh, create a copy of a guide, uh, and then you can, uh, you can, so customization is very easy. You can add steps in a guide, or you can create a copy of a guide and then take it into a different direction. That's great. So, Kathy, you thank you, by the way, for joining us. Uh, absolutely, thank you again. Um, I know we've got two minutes, but we're going to stick around to answer questions. Uh, Alex, any uh, final uh, question? Yeah, so for the self hosting option, mm -hmm. um, does that change how the content is published in any way? So I think at the create time, we'll just point it to your hard drive location, and then it'll start writing guide into your inside your enterprise. So we'll just configure it in such a way that the, when we are creating the guides, the publishing option is happening inside your SharePoint or Dropbox or wherever we want it to publish to. So Salesforce, like the, the core idea here is uh, the, the guide me inside Salesforce, it can point and it can understand where it needs to go and fetch the content from. So if you could be on site, and in, as long as the computer can talk to your SharePoint or as long as it can talk to, it can go and get the assets from there and display it inside. We're gonna stick around. I wanna thank you guys, and uh, also we're happy to answer any other follow-on questions. Uh, thank you guys for, for uh, joining us. and. Uh,